Hi everyone. Uh, I figured I'd throw together a quick video just to review some of the content you've been working on in class. Let's get started. Uh, obviously you've been working on this theory called plate tectonics, which is basically an extension of Alfred Wegener's work. Uh, this theory that we're going to look at was put together in the mid-1900s and built upon what Wegener began working uh, early in the century. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to know is this. The, the outer shell of the Earth, which I uh, gave an example of being the magic shell on a scoop of ice cream, the solid outer crust of the Earth, we call it the lithosphere, it's actually broken into pieces that we call plates. You see them here. Uh, you can call them lithospheric plates, you can call them tectonic plates, or simply plates. Um, but this is the solid outer part of the Earth that we live on. Uh, some of the plates are all oceanic crust, some of them are all continental, and some are a combination of the two. That's going to become important. Keep in mind that we do have these two distinct types of crust. If you look at the gray here, this is our continental crust. It's thick, it's made of the rock granite, it's not quite that dense, only about 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. But if you look at the dark gray area under the oceans, that's the oceanic crust. It's very different. It's much thinner, more dense because it's made of the rock basalt. The density of the basalt is about 3 grams per cubic centimeter. Keep in mind that information can be found on your Earth's interior chart in your reference tables. Now, that crust, whether it's oceanic or continental, along with this kind of orangey section called the rigid mantle, those two together are what make up our lithosphere, this solid outer shell of the Earth. Keep in mind that beneath that is kind of a gooey, plastic, partially melted bubblegum layer called the asthenosphere. And so the plates that we live on are actually floating on the asthenosphere beneath. Now down in the asthenosphere, that melty, gooey, bubblegum-like rock is actually able to move. And it moves because of a process known as convection. Essentially, convection says that hot material becomes less dense and rises. And then when it rises, it cools down, becomes more dense, and sinks. And what we end up with are these rising and sinking currents called convection cells in the mantle. Those end up being the machine, the force that is driving the motion of the plates. So in this diagram, we have a type of boundary called a divergent boundary, where the plates are literally being ripped apart by the movement of the convection beneath. Keep in mind, this convection takes place in the asthenosphere, right below the lithosphere. So let's take a look at a map of the plates. Okay, it's a very similar map in your reference table, which we'll see shortly. But for the moment, take a look. Um, you notice that the plates, some are very large, some are a little bit smaller, but they're all moving. And what that means is that there's lots of action at the places where plates meet. For example, that's where we find all our earthquakes, shown here with pink dots. That's where we find all our volcanoes, shown here with red triangles. And this is also where we find a lot of the Earth's active mountain ranges. So keep in mind that all seismic activity, earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountains, tends to happen at or near these boundaries between plates. Which brings us to those boundaries themselves. Now, all of plate tectonics comes down to the fact that things happen when two plates interact with one another. So we need to know what those interactions look like. And it really boils down to three types of interactions, three types of plate boundaries. The first is known as a transform boundary, and that occurs when plates slide past one another, as seen by these arrows. We also have convergent boundaries, where plates collide, and divergent boundaries, where they drift apart. You should be familiar with each of these and the kinds of things we see at each of them. So let's go into some examples here. Okay, uh, I'm going to be alluding back to this chart. This is a map in your reference tables that shows plate boundaries. Uh, so keep that handy as you're continuing to learn about this. Let's start with transform boundaries. So these are the boundaries where plates slide past one another. If you take a look at this animation, you'll notice the lithosphere floating on top of the asthenosphere is being driven by convection currents, which is causing them to slide laterally past each other, right past each other. And so right along that boundary in the middle, you get a lot of pressure built up, a lot of grinding of the plates, which is often released in the form of earthquakes. Transform boundaries